The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Let us begin our Eucharist by first acknowledging our own sinfulness as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance accomplish it. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. But the word of the Lord came to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, but the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go take the road back to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I long to see your face, O Lord. I long long to see see your face, face, O Lord. Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. I long long to to see see your your face, face, O Lord. Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. I long long to to see see your your face, face, O Lord. Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. I long long to to see see your your face, face, O Lord. Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, Everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members and to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members and to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. These last couple of weeks have been filled with discord. Only a month ago, people were sheltered in their homes, be protected from the virus, there was very little traffic. My walks down Orange Avenue in the evening were pretty solitary. Very few cars and even fewer pedestrians on the street. But like an out of control firestorm, protests have, have uh, spread across our nation after the heinous murder of George Floyd. Cable news shows display wall to wall violence in cities Talking heads from all sides rattle on and pontificate and point fingers of blame. And as summer begins, there is a lack of quiet in our country. There is a silence deficit in our nation. And the only solution to the madness around us is prayer. It was in the silence that the Lord spoke to Elijah. God was not in the violent wind. He was not in the ground-shattering earthquake or the blazing fire. But in a tiny whispering sound, Elijah immediately recognized the presence of the Lord. Days before, Elijah had called out the prophets of Baal, and he witnessed their violent death at the hands of the crowd. And now Elijah was on the run from Jezebel, who said she was going to do exactly the same thing to him. And the prophet was looking for solace and direction. What was he to do now? It seemed that the whole world was after him. But in the quiet response of a whisper, God answered his prayer. Elijah was to return to the Israelites, anoint two kings, prepare his successor. He was to return to the Israelites to continue his vocation as God's prophet. We are invited to understand the deeper expressions of our own vocations as well, our call to discipleship. Today's gospel is part of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus offers six illustrations of how our righteousness must surpass that of the world. He invites us to dig deeper into our hearts to understand what God is asking of us. And this understanding will only come about through the silence of prayer. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, but I say to you, Jesus is offering new teachings that challenge previous views. Adultery is more than sexual infidelity in marriage. It begins with lustful thoughts. As I mentioned on Wednesday, the Beatitudes set the tone for the entire Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the clean of heart. When the heart is not purified of lustful thoughts, there is grave sin that will follow, adultery. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. To live righteously is to live as God intends us to live to decide in our heart to obey the word of God, not to allow the culture to compromise God's will 
just because everyone else is doing it. The way we come to this deeper understanding is through prayer. And there can be no authentic prayer or discernment without listening. And listening is not possible without silence. We read in Psalm 46, Be still and know that I am God. The Lord does not speak to us in grand signs or visions. The Lord speaks to us in tiny whispering sounds. In the rule of St. Benedict we read, there are times even when good words are to be left unsaid out of esteem for silence. So allow your heart to bathe in the voice of silence and enjoy the restful waters where the Lord will lead you. Let us now present to the Lord our prayers. And what are your prayers? If you can speak them through your masks. Maybe that's not such a good idea. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of Annie Cook, for whom this Mass is being offered, for all of our graduates this year, that the Lord will give them the grace and wisdom as they go forward in their life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick in a special way, Dylan Evans and uh, Eric Waring, and for all the sick. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, Ed McVaney and, and all our relatives and friends for their eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. And for the prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. And let us ask the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ Jesus our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. In giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, John, his auxiliary, the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. Of the world. Have you mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only Lord, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Reminder, tomorrow we will not have an 8 o'clock Mass in the morning. We've discontinued that now that we're back at our regular schedule. We will have confessions tomorrow at between 4 and 5 o'clock, our regular time, and the confessions will be celebrated here in the sanctuary and not in the reconciliation room as we're trying to stay away from confined spaces. In a few moments, we'll have communion, and I remind you to exit by the side aisle, side aisles and then come forward. I've been really pleased this week. You know, this was our beta testing week to see how this was going to work for the weekend, and everybody did so well. You were so orderly. You think we had a whole group of Republicans here. <laughs> so we thank you very much for following all the regulations and the rules, and we'll, we're looking forward to a good weekend where we can bring much, many more people here to our masses. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ.
Thanks be to God.